I'm Enrico Maria Minnella. I'm an anesthesiologist from Italy. I came here the first time five years ago, and my project now focuses on the clinical implementation of uh, prehabilitation that we know now it works. My name is Miquel Coca Martinez, and I come from Barcelona. And my research uh, program here at uh, the MGH is about prehabilitation, multimodal prehabilitation in patients uh, listed for uh, endovascular surgery. My name is Karen Tam and uh, I just graduated from medical school so I'm starting my master's with Dr. Carly and the focus of my master's is to develop a pilot study um, studying the feasibility of implementing prehabilitation program in patients with incisional hernias. The POP program is a new concept in cancer care and in cancer treatment. It started in 2010 when we thought about how to improve the care of patients suffering for cancer. So we used the time that in general the patient is just wait, wait for surgery, wait for a call, wait to be scheduled. We used this time to intervene on these main factors, okay? On nutrition, on the physical level, on the mental level. Dr. Carley's program really, it, it embraces all of the person. It's not just the cancer they're dealing with, but they're giving you exercises and the, all the stuff that they're giving you, the nutritional advice, everything, is to build the body up. And so it's the body, so that when we go in to have the operation, we're prepared for it, much better than somebody who doesn't have benefit. I went through that operation like a breeze, and uh, afterwards it was a breeze, even though I, I mean, I had some pain and all that sort of business, but I was really in good. The following Saturday after, I came out on Monday, on the Saturday I was at Rome Fair, you know, and uh, hobbling, but I was there. <laughs> so. If a patient undergoes surgery, it takes on average to, I would say, three to six months to recover to his baseline functional status. Now, we proved here, and we have the number to say that with prehabilitation, patients improve their status before surgery. And about 60, 65% of the patient, they stay to that level at one month after surgery. So the difference, it's really high. Our patients, a common emotion that they come in with is anxiety, feeling depressed, um, feeling a loss of control with this new diagnosis. So we give them the tools and the resources within the POP program to give them back the control that they want to have. They come here frail and with a very poor quality of life. They, maybe they cannot visit their grandchildren. They cannot even walk one block to buy the groceries. So um, they come here, we do all, uh, all the program, and then you see them leave after happy, being able to do all the things uh, that they were not able to do before and, and to me, for me this is the, the best. Anybody who's having an operation should have the opportunity to be given something like this so that it builds the body up in preparation for the operation, which is so important and it's what saved my life. And I blame Car Dr. Carly for me being alive today. And so, thank you. For sure, I think uh, there needs to be more research, which is why you know M Miguel, Enrico, and myself are participating in the master's program or a PhD program, specifically in the prehabilitation area. Um, so that way we can have more uh, evidence-based um, research in sub supporting this prehabilitation program for not only just cancer patients, but uh, all the different patients, you know, receiving chemo or hernia patients or vascular patients. So, so all, all the donation and all the grant we received from the different associations are really, really important for both for research and for patients. And it provides us the time to be able to come in and do the research actually um, and to develop a program that we can implement to, to allow patients to have this quality of life and standard of care. So 
your funding is very important to us and we really appreciate it. Bonjour, je suis Dr. Chantal Séguin. Je suis hématologue-oncologue au Centre universitaire de santé McGill. Nos traitements de chimiothérapie en hématologie introduisent des hautes doses de glucocorticoïdes. Ces glucocorticoïdes-là ont un impact sur euh, les vaisseaux sanguins. Et euh, comme conséquence néfaste, on a ce qu'on appelle une complication euh, appelée ostéonécrose ou la mort du tissu osseux. Une fois diagnostiqué, euh, on, on détermine le stade de la maladie, le stade pouvant aller de 0 à 6. Euh, on dit souvent que les stades de 3 et moins euh, peuvent être potentiellement réversibles, alors que les stades de 4 et plus, où à ce moment-là, il y a un affaissement de la tête fémorale, comme une forme de fracture, si vous voulez. Une fois que le stade 4 arrive avec une forme de fracture, on évolue vers les stades plus avancés et éventuellement vers l'ostéoarthrite sévère et qui va mener éventuellement euh, irréversiblement au remplacement total de la hanche. Et mes projets de recherche vraiment sont tous orientés à vouloir euh, trouver le mécanisme par lequel ces hautes doses de glucocorticoïdes-là fonctionnent euh, pour amener ces conséquences-là afin d'éventuellement pouvoir les bloquer et euh, d'empêcher euh, le phénomène de se développer chez les patients euh, atteints de cancer et, et les autres patients qui sont traités avec des hautes doses. Si j'avais à pratiquer la médecine sans la recherche, <rire> il manquerait probablement quelque chose. Euh, et si, je ne pense pas que je serais capable non plus d'être juste un chercheur. Donc, de, de voir des patients fait aussi partie euh, intégrante euh, de la pratique. Donc, je dirais que l'un ne va pas sans l'autre. Les bourses de recherche sont incroyablement importantes euh, à cause du fait que tout ce que l'on fait en recherche, euh, malheureusement, coûte euh, une fortune. Euh, que l'on travaille sur... Euh, une étude clinique, euh, une étude animale, une étude sur les gènes. Euh, les, euh, les coûts de ça, c'est incroyable. Et euh, on a vraiment besoin de financement, sinon on n'irait nulle part vraiment.